Hello everyone, it's Major Park. Today I'd like to talk about how you can become a Special Force member. It's very important to understand that you know, becoming a Special Force member uh, is not something that you can just become right away. There's certain uh, requirements that you gotta fulfill and there's certain training that you gotta go through to become a uh, Special Force member. I'd like to kind of generally explain about the Special Operations Command Force Structure. Some of you guys saw in the movie or in the mass media, you saw a you know SEAL Team 6 or Delta folks. So it's not just a uh, army or navy that has a uh, special force units. As you can see on my screen, underneath a special operations command, every military department ha have their special operation units. There can be many different variety of uh, uh, different units. They do many different kinds of missions. It is a unified command and commands, right? Meaning all those different departments as a unified operation. It's not just the one military branch that does all the special operation, right? Conduct as a team, right? that's a key thing. Right? Europe, right? Latin America, Middle East, Central Asia, Caribbean, pretty much around the world, many units are spread across. And I'm in the uh, US uh, Special Force SOCOM uh, website. The mission is uh, US uh, SOCOM, right? Develops and employs full capable special operations forces to conduct global special operations and activities as part of the joint force support, persistent and network and distributed combatant command operations and campaigns against state and non-state actors to protect and advance U.S. policies and objectives. What the U.S. SOCOM does is civil affairs, counterinsurgency, counterterrorism, counterweapon, uh, mass destructions, uh, direct actions, foreign humanitarian assistance, uh, foreign internal defense, uh, hostage rescue and recovery, military information support operations, uh, security force assistance, special reconnaissance, unconventional warfare, and preparation of the environment. Uh, the one that kind of stand out for me is a unconventional warfare. In today's very complex world, hard to tell who's the enemy, even though warfare is changing, obviously well, right? But special operations being you know, always prepared for unexpected. And not only special operations, I think overall as organization, across the board, regardless of branch, and that's what we're becoming uh, to be a prepare for any uh, unexpected uh, warfare. And what are the requirements to become a special warfare? You must be a U.S. citizen. At least 20 years old, um, the ship date, to infantry, one station, uh, unit training, and not have reached 32nd birthday prior to same uh, ship date. Okay. You must qualify uh, airborne training. Uh, one of the viewers asked me, do I have to be a certain MOS to go to airborne training? Well, answer is no. There's no like specific like restriction because of the MOS like Special Force or Infantry MOS. If you stay in combat arms, you have more opportunity to go to school. You could still apply and you, you will still have a chance to go to urban school. Also, you must meet the Physical Fitness Assessment, PFA minimum, standard of 49 push-ups and 59 sit-ups and 15 minutes and 12 seconds, um, uh, which is two mile run and six pull-ups. You must be eligible for security clearance. This is for people who's already currently serving now in the Army. The minimum rank of E3, and must be 20 years old. You must not be older than 36 years old. You're eligible for secret clearance, clearance, be no more than 14 years time in service, E3 to E6, and then you must have no more than 12 years in time in service, nine months of time in grade, okay? So those are some, uh, the rank and time in grade requirement. You don't wanna be like 20 years of service about to retire and, and then I can send you to school. Right? So that's the reason why there's that, uh, the time restriction as well. ASVAB doesn't go anywhere, right? Your GT uh, score of 110, you must pass a special force physical. It's not just a regular uh, PT test you're talking about. Okay, so you're gonna reclass the MOS. And officers, you gotta be at least the first lieutenant promotable before attending a special forces qualification course. We call it Q course. You shouldn't have any UCMJ file, you don't DUI, whatever that you don't wanna have the negative file on your system, okay? Because that's gonna be a disqualifying factor to join the uh, special force. You must have a DLAP score. So DLAP score is, uh, it's not a DLPT. It's not a language that you're gonna hear, okay? When you go through those exams, you'll be kind of surprised. What am I hearing? Is this a language or something? You might be think like that, but it, it is a uh, capability that how well you can learn a new language. That can be a critical thing. If you, you know how to speak that language of that uh, the host nation's country, then obviously it's, it's an advantage to accomplish the mission. Benefits and rewards, same benefit for active duty, but there's more special pay and more uh, the specialized training than the, the unique missions you know that you uh, 
have a chance to be part of special force. Be just because you're a special force member, then you have some other uh, special duty pay as well, right? I mean, speaking of sp special duty pay, uh, special duty pay in these soldiers that demand extra responsibility or extraordinary effort. Example of this include a perishing instructors, field specialists, combat controllers, monthly amount ranges from $75 to $450. Depends on your your MOS, it depends on your assignment, depends on your mission. Uh, this is the range that you might get. The harsh duty pay, there's a lot of different areas around the world. Uh, it varies, uh, but it can be 50, 100, or 150, or, you know, or depend, you know, depending on, on the area. Because you're taking D-Lab, you will eventually learn new language. You're going to test for DLTT, right, which is a foreign language proficiency pay. Depending on your score, you will receive uh, offers of, uh, up to uh, $1,000 per month. That depends on the language as well. Certain language will not get paid, just FOI. Fly pay and diving duty to sea pay. So it's not just because all oh, your special force, you're gonna get all that, okay? It's because, just because you're a special force member, I'm gonna get all of this. No, it all depends on your ability, your MOS, your mission. And let's say, for example, I already mentioned about language pay, right? If your language pay, uh, let's say your language happens to be not getting a, uh, a, a fall into the category where you're gonna get pay, pay obviously then you're gonna get special pay. Once again, it varies. Everyone will be different. But now you understand those qualification eligibility. Once you are um, you apply, you're ready to go for special force, right? What are the training and the requirement? So there's more requirement you gotta go through. You, you went through that pre-selection. That doesn't mean that you are ready to go to Q, Q course. So for example, here, special force preparation course. So now you're here, right? After you went through pre-selection, you also have to do a physical fitness a test. It's gonna be very challenging. Okay. We're not talking about just passing score of ACFT. Okay? And also do a proficiency in the land navigation. We're talking about the miles and miles of well land navigation. And they're going to do it day and night, moving into a special force assessment selection. Now, this is SPS. This is the right before you go to Q course, right? You got to go through this selection process, assessment selection. Test your survival skills, places an even stronger emphasis on intense physical and mental training. This is considered the first proper phase of special forces training, which we continue on to a special forces Q, uh, qualification course, which is a Q course. I'm not going to go over everything, but just kind of give you an example. Day one, in week two, 60.5 miles of a uh, a safety test, right? 10 alternate, 50 meters, four lunge. You know, you, you see how there's a checklist right here, 800 meter warm up. It just list goes on, okay? And you got to pass all that. It's very tough, it's very challenging. Um, it's not an easy uh, physical, uh, uh, you know, training. On the day five, now do first tech mile rock, rock, rock march, right, and dry without drinking water. So you're gonna be doing ten mile rock march without drinking water. Imagine that. As you can see, the days go, the weeks go by. It gets tougher and tougher. Let's say you made that assessment selection. Now you're into the real, uh, the Q course. First phase will be, you know, the orientation, the one week introduction, special force. We talk about you know foundation of understanding special forces right because obviously you have to have knowledge about special force right so you gotta do all that and you know doctrine mission command uh introduction of conventional warfare um you're gonna go through all that even the history as well and mos training uh, serious school okay it's a series of survival uh, invasion and resistant escape exercises uh, those are uh, the last 13 weeks and cover special forces common task advanced operations techniques, tactical skills, last seven weeks, drills, candidates, advanced marksmanship, you know, urban operation, you know, co counter insurgency, right? Live fire maneuvers, sensitive flights, exploitation, and other special forces skills. There will be time when you're not gonna be eat when you're uh, hungry for, you know, many days. Uh, I'm sure, you know, you, you, your stress level rises and you're gonna be stressed out, but you're still going through training. It's not really easy. Robin said, and training phase, the services, the Test for soldiers hoping to earn a green beret. Okay, this is a collective training phase. Um, now, the regiment of first formation, of phase five, known as the regiment of first formation, marks transition the field work into classroom environment. Now, you went through all the, the field training, the field exercise, the field qualification process. Finally, now you're in a, a classroom learning uh, environment uh, training. Singer ceremony where special forces trainee will cover the green beret and special forces tap for the first time. Very exciting that moment now. And also uh, language and culture phase. Candidates will fine tune their skills and language to which they have been assigned. And languages include French, Indonesian, um, Bahasa, Spanish, Arabic, Chinese, Mandarin, Korean, uh, Persian, Farsi, Russian, uh, Tagalog, Thai, 
Levantine, Arabic, I mean the list goes on, but those are the one the languages that they'll be learned. Uh, that you, you, get, you get to learn. Obviously, you're gonna pick one language you're gonna learn, right? There's no way you're gonna learn all those languages. I mean, that's uh, <laughs> that's crazy, right? So you will get to pick those one language and you get to learn that. That's the reason why, like I said previous earlier, the reason that you take the D lab is test your ability to learn a new language. That's one of the training they will receive as a special force, uh, a part of the special force qualification course. And last not but not least, it's graduation, right? If you complete all that, you pass all those phases. Now you're finally at the final phase and you are at the graduation phase. It involves a week of our processing and you're you know, officially now become a Green Beret uh, Special Force soldiers. So those are kind of general uh, layout of what you're gonna be expecting, what are the requirements, and which training that you have to go through. It's quite a long journey. It doesn't happen overnight. Talk about the, um, you know, the uniforms and the regulation for Special Force members. Because one of the viewers asked me a very interesting question. I mean, if you're a special force member, right, can you just grow hair long, right? Can you just grow beer, right? Can I just wear anything in civilian clothes? The answer is yes and no. I want to show you some picture like this right here on my screen. Special force with the magazine. I right? joined the elite force. He has mustache on there, right? With tattoo on the arm, right? As I mentioned about earlier about unconventional warfare, right? Or guerrilla warfare, special missions. When you're on a mission or different country, dealing with this many high sensitive uh, missions or you know high classified missions, like, you probably have to blend in uh, with the population. You don't want to go uh, to the enemy area and, hey, I'm the enemy. You don't want to be like that, right? So uh, that's the reason why that when they're on certain missions, uh, they're allowed to you know grow beer, allowed to wear a certain outfit to blend into that population. Uh, so once again, it depends on the mission. It depends on uh, what they're doing. If you are in just regular garrison environment, you have to uh, follow the army regulation. And the bottom line is, even if you're a special force, you know, member, you are still in the army, so you gotta follow those army regulations 607-1 tattoo regulation. When you go to the recruiting office, it depends on what is their current situation. Let's say if the army is downsizing, you might not be qualified to join the army. I'm not discouraging. That can be a factor to disqualify you from joining a service. If you're already in the service, that tattoo can be a factor to, to not get the job that you want. You just have to kind of be you know, cautious and think about it. Right? Can you have neck, face, hand tattoos in the Army? The answer is no, right? Army does not allow tattoos on face, neck, and hands. The only exception is a small ring tattoo that can exist on, hand, uh, on each hand, limit one per hand, right? Face and neck tattoos are highly discouraged in the US Army. You cannot have any extremist tattoos or uh, brands are affiliated with, you know, you know gang members or, um, you know, sexist, indecent, racist. Those are all prohibited. I'd like to talk about the three things to its conclusion. If you want to join a special force, you have to be physically, mentally ready. You got to have the mindset. Absolutely, you can do it. I don't want anyone to go, you know, get selected and go through the course and fail, right? So that's why I said and always uh, take care of your body, right? take care of your health, always you know, be careful, right? have the mindset that you will be successful. Number two is that, or let's say you're already in the current serving and you're already in the unit and you wanna pursue a special force career, um, you can do it. There's always an opportunity. You just have to look and ask and just be proactive. Even if you miss a chance of whatever you are right now, uh, there can be opportunity as you move along. So don't be discouraged because just because you missed a chance to become a special force member. Last but not least, within the special operations command, it's not just a, you know, uh, the special force member with the rifle and special recon, it's doing special missions. It's not just something that you guys see on the movie. Okay, there's many different missions and there are many different units, and then many different the purpose uh, under a special operations command. Uh, study more about the special operations if you're interested in it. Just look into that uh, force structure, learn more about the history, and learn about you know what is out there, what kind of units are out there. Once you understand the missions, you know what? Maybe I want to be part of this unit. Uh, maybe I want to be part of this civil affair unit. Maybe I want to be part of this PSYOP unit. Instead of going to a uh, range regiment, I want to go this route. So you'll get to know what is that you really want to uh, pursue, even within the special operations command. Okay, you know, so it's not just like, you know, I was telling you earlier, it's not just one thing. There's a many different career fields you, you guys can pursue, even within you know, Special Operations Command. Look into it, research and study, and then find out how you guys want to pursue your career within the Special Force Command. 
thank you guys for watching my video it was major park i always thank you guys for liking liking my video and subscribe my video thank you guys